these are some questions from the ulman book okay database systems the complete book okay so let's see this very simple question suppose relation r has these attributes okay total you have n attributes as a function of n tell how many values how many super keys are there how many super keys are there if the only key is a1 if the only key is a1 again what key means what key means what key means that means candidate key right that means candidate key so tell me here so how many super keys will be there any superset of this are every superset of this so just find out number of superset of this just find out how many supersets are there so number of supersets of a a1 so what is the number of supersets of a1 for every other attribute you have two choices for every other attribute there are two choices correct for every other attribute there are two choices so the answer will be 2 power n minus 1 okay what about this the only keys are a1 comma a2 the only keys are a1 comma a2 so you can notice this is a candidate key a1 okay and so you can you can assume that these let's assume these are the super keys of a1 these are the super keys containing a1 so what are these these are super keys containing a1 these are super keys containing a1 okay and these are what these are super keys containing a2 these are super keys containing a2 correct so what i and what are these these are super keys containing super keys containing both a1 comma a2 okay both a1 comma a2 so these are super keys containing a1 comma a2 so your answer will be what your answer is very simple so your total number of super keys so what will be the total number of super keys total number of super keys will be you can notice super keys containing a1 plus super keys containing a2 minus minus super keys containing both a1 a2 okay you add this you add this but when you do this these you are counting twice two times okay the common things you are counting two times so how many super keys that contain a a1 that is 2 power n minus 1 that is 2 power n minus 1 and minus 2 power n minus 2. okay so the answer will be 2 power n minus 1 plus 2 power n minus 1 what is that that is your 2 power n your answer will be 2 power n minus 2 power n minus 2 correct yes or no so for this question answer will be for this question answer will be 2 power n minus 2 power n minus 2 okay what about the next the only keys are a1 a2 a3 a4 this is also very simple okay you just find out what are the supersets of so 2 power n minus 2 plus 2 power n minus 2 minus 2 power n minus 4 right correct yes or no so 2 power n minus 2 2 power n minus 2 plus 2 power n minus 2 minus 2 power n minus 4 for this question what will be the answer because remember here you have a1 a2 and here you have a3 a4 so that is the reason this is happening and what about this one a1 a2 that will be 2 power n minus 2 a1 a3 that will be 2 power n minus 2 but they're common but they're common 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 that is a1 a2 a3 that is a1 a2 a3 so the common will be 2 power n minus 3 the common will be n minus 3 yes or no 2 power n minus 3 is this clear to everyone because a1 a2 a1 a3 so the overall this is a1 a2 a3 okay overall this is a1 a2 a3 so your answer will be this a 2 power n minus 2 plus 2 power n minus 2 minus 2 power n minus 3 is this question clear to everyone because remember when you have a1 a2 like here you have a1 a2 and here you have uh, a1 a3 a1 a3 so then common part will have what so the common part will be called a1 a2 a3 so the common part will be a1 a2 a3 so that is the reason this is the next question let's see this which of the following are not valid fd rules so tell me is this valid fd rule a determines b can i say b determine a definitely this is not valid why very easily as you can see a b you can notice for example one one two three uh, for example maybe i can say one two one one you can notice you can notice you can notice a determines b a determines b but you can notice b does not determine a okay so a determines b but b does not determine a for example like this you can say okay so a determines b but b does not determine a so definitely this is not correct if a b determines c a determines c 
a b determining c a determining c then can i say b determine c this is also not correct okay you can clearly see okay what is the best method tell me what is the best method what is the best method what is the best method the best method is in this what is b plus the best method is in this what is b plus in this b plus is b in this b plus is b so this is a wrong okay so this is a wrong this is the best method this is the best 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 method okay so tell me in this what you need to find uh, sorry 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 this okay so in this what you need to find in this what you can say can you say a determine c can you say a determine c in this if you find a plus that will be a in this if you find b plus that will be b so we cannot say this or this we cannot say this or this is this clear we cannot say this or this let's move on let's see this question show that if a relation has no attribute that is functionally determined by all the other attributes then the relation has no non trivial fd at all this is a nice question okay see the question what the question is saying the question is saying that if a relation has no attribute that is functionally determined by all other attributes combined just tell me the best method is what the best method that is what contrapositive the best method is contrapositive so in the contrapositive approach what you will do assume there is a non trivial fd okay assume there is non trivial fd assume assume there is non trivial fd then what should happen okay then what should happen then there should be some attribute which is determined by all others then there should be some attribute which is determined by all others yes or no then there should be some attribute for some a agree agree do you agree yes or no this is the contrapositive approach this is the best approach contrapositive you know contrapositive if p implies q then what is the contrapositive what is the contrapositive the contrapositive negation q implies negation p okay so this is the contrapositive so you can very easily see that for this question i am saying that the best approach is a contrapositive approach so if you assume there is a non trivial fd just assume there is a non trivial fd then definitely this will happen that some attribute for some a some attribute then definitely this will happen for some a the remaining attributes will determine a now this is very easy to prove why assume there is a non trivial fd if you are assuming there is a non trivial fd then you can can i assume this type of fd where something is determining something some attribute because see you already know that you already know that if you have something like alpha beta determining ab what do you can write it like if you have alpha if you have alpha determining ab this you can write it what this you can write it alpha determining a alpha determining b okay so like this you can notice this you can write like this this you can write like this correct okay so this you can write like this this you can write like this so this is if and only if so you can just assume that non trivial fd you can just assume that non trivial fd has single attribute on the rhs can i assume this can i assume can i assume that your non trivial fd has single attribute on the rhs because you can do this because if you have more than one attribute on the rhs then what you can do if you have more than one attribute on the rhs what you can do you can split the rhs you can split the rhs if you have alpha determining ab then you can write it uh, alpha determining a alpha determining b so you can split the rhs so i can assume i can assume that i can assume there is a single attribute okay whatever attribute you want for example let's assume your relation is this let's assume your relation is like this a b c d e f this is your relation whatever attribute tell me which attribute should i take tell me any attribute okay for example let me take c okay let me take c now because this is non trivial fd so can c be here because this is non trivial fd so can c be here c cannot be here right okay so someone is determining this maybe maybe may, let's assume let's assume b is determining this or let's assume bf is determining this now what is the problem if this happens if this happens then automatically what will happen then automatically you can notice that r minus c will determine c agree or not then automatically r minus c will determine c yes or no is this clear so if some if if you have non trivial fd like this then automatically what will happen that r minus c means i can say 
A, B, D, E, F. They will determine C. That's it. This is your proof. Hence, proved. Isn't it simple? So very nice question, right? Let's see this question. Tell me the answer. So X and Y are set of attributes. If X is subset of Y, then, so this is what we have to prove. Yeah, this is what we have to prove that if X is subset of Y, if X is subset of Y, then X closer will be subset of Y closer. This is very easy to prove, right? Because if X is subset of Y, see, if like, for example, if X is subset of Y, remember X is subset of Y. Now you can notice that if X can determine, if X plus is alpha, means X can determine alpha, right? It means X can determine alpha. So if X plus is alpha, means X can determine alpha. Then what I can say, if X can determine alpha, Y is superset of X, right? Y is a superset of X. This Y, this Y is superset of X. So definitely this Y, Y has something extra. Y is a ZX. So you can clearly see what is Y plus. Y plus will be ZX plus. ZX plus will be whatever, ZX plus. It will contain everything that X can determine. It will contain everything that X can determine. So you can notice Y plus is a definite, something extra can be there. So definitely you can notice that Y plus is a superset of X plus. So this is an easy question. So if X is subset of Y, then definitely X plus will be subset of Y plus. So this is an easy question because very simple that if this subset, if this can determine something, if this can determine something, if you can determine something with this, then definitely this, this bigger thing, what this bigger thing will determine, this bigger circle, what this will determine, this will determine something more. So you can notice if this small circle can determine uh, this, then definitely this bigger, this bigger circle, you can notice this will determine something bigger. This will determine something bigger. Okay, so like that.